Hey, good morning. This is Kevin Soda on the porch. Hoping you're having a good day. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, important legal actions some people ignore in this uh, time of stress and COVID-19. Uh, and uh, police protest uh, across the country. The fact that uh, guns are still a major issue. Um, some people have given guide-like qualities to the gun, um, worshipful qualities in the United States. And the, uh, James Brady was shot at the same time Reagan was uh, back some 40 years ago. And he uh, created an organization, and it's called the Brady uh, United Against Gun Violence. Brady United Against Gun Violence. And here's uh, from news from the recent newsletter. Okay. Um, they noted at the beginning of the spring, um, COVID-19 poses an unprecedented public safety threat that requires us all to band together in common purposes and sacrifice to save lives. Engaging in physical distancing is, distancing is needed to stop the spread, but the gun lobby has filed lawsuits seeking to subvert these critical public health measures so they can sell more guns. And the Trump administration is helping them, helping them. Um, Brady is resisting these dangerous efforts. The gun lobbies have filed lawsuits challenging stay-at-home orders in California, New York, New Jersey, New Mexico, and Pennsylvania, seeking uh, to force the opening of gun stores. And this happened uh, very early on and could happen again. An NRA lawsuit claims that Governor Cuomo's decision to shut down gun stores and other non-essential businesses was pointless and an arbitrary attack on the Second Amendment. The Trump administration has stepped in to aid the gun lobby. In response to gun industry lobbying, the Department of Homeland Security recommended deeming gun businesses critical infrastructure in apparent response. New Jersey and Pennsylvania revised orders to classify gun stores as essential, allowing them to be reopened bullying. Brady immediately filed a Freedom of Information Act request that demands that the DHS produce all emails and other documents regarding the decision, including any gun lobby or political influence, and whether public health experts signed off on the guidance. Probably not. Brady will file the amicus brief in support of gun store closures in every just jurisdiction in which these orders are challenged. Brady will argue that the governments can implement uh, broad safety measures to address uh, public health measures, emergencies, even if constitutional liberties are restricted. And the Second Amendment, by the way, does not protect the right to immediately buy or sell a gun, and certainly not to spread the coronavirus while shopping. Bottom line, we're ready to take action and defend Americans' most important rights, the right to live. This is the core, a key feature of the gun law, a right to live and to live in peace. Um, uh, Jonathan Lowry, he's uh, one of the executives on the board at the um, Brady Center. He says, uh, these are the priorities this year, next year, and we need to pay attention and support them in our communities. Uh, Mr. Lowry writes, the COVID-19 pandemic is on all of our minds here at Brady even as we continue our work to address the epidemic that is gun violence in America. Yeah, don't forget the epidemic gun violence in America. But when you work for an organization named after a man who would not let a bullet stop him from pushing for a landmark public safety legislation, you don't give up easily or ever. Brady Legal has taken on the gun lobby in court for over 30 years and we're certainly not stopping now. We've litigated in 45 states and in over 250 lawsuits and won over $60 million in verdicts and settlements. And this year will be our most active and most impactful year ever. So even during the middle of the COVID-19, they're very active. Uh, Brad, uh, Brady Legal is activating, uh, actively litigating high impact cases in courts across America, including against one of the nation's largest gun retailers top crime gun sellers, and several major gun manufacturers. We are representing victims of gun violence in 20 lawsuits in over a dozen states from New York to California. 
In the coming months, we are launching the first steps of a landmark suit against all major gun manufacturers, cross-examining gun industry executives, and obtaining documents in the city of Gary versus Smith and Wesson, Indiana. Litigating a class action lawsuit for victims of the Route 91 shooting in Nevada, the largest mass shooting in modern American history, in Prescott versus Slide Affair, a uh, slide fire. Preparing for a trial, seeking to hold a gun manufacturer accountable for its role in supplying a crime gun in Williams versus uh, B. Miller, that's in New York. Preparing for trial against a major store chain for selling a gun in a straw sale that was used in a double homicide, homicide in Miller versus Harps, that's in Arkansas. Taking on the nation's largest international gun marketplace on behalf of law enforcement officers shot in Bauer versus Arms List, uh, that's in Wisconsin. Taking first steps to prove cases against dealers who sold guns used to shoot law enforcement officers in Baranowski versus Shooter's Shop, again, Wisconsin, and in Hardy Chester versus Chester Arms in New Hampshire, and Runnels versus KSNE Sports in Indiana. Taking on a major gun de dealer chain that sold an assault rifle and high capacity magazine used in a mass shooting in Solis versus Academy Sports. And finally, challenging special protections that only the gun industry receives and seeking to make guns safer in Gustafson versus uh, Springfield, Pennsylvania, and Travisio versus Glock, a Arizona. Okay, that's just a those are just a few of the cases they're involved in. To stop gun crime, you need to go to the source, which is why Brady focuses on the supply chain in our gun works. Uh, but first, let's uh, cover some basic facts. Federal law requires gun dealers to have licenses to operate gun stores, and only one federal agency issues federal firearms. You know, that's the AFT, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Since the AFT is not in the store when guns are sold, the nation's federal firearms license holders act as agents of law enforcement. It's when they don't that we're in trouble. Most gun stores owners comply with federal and state law, but a minority do not, and society pays a price. For example, about 5% of the licensed gun dealers sell about 90% of the recovered crime guns. I'll read that again. 5% of the licensed gun dealers in the United States sell about 90% of the recovered grind crime guns. The ATF should focus enforcement on these crime gun suppliers, but largely it hasn't effectively done so. ATF has failed to adequately exercise its authority to inspect gun dealers and revoke licenses. In 2017, the ATF inspected less than 10% of the dealers. Of those, the ATF cited more than half were violating the laws, yet revoked very few licenses. Law enforcement by ATF endangers public safety because rogue dealers supply the criminal market. So I'll say it again. Lax enforcement by ATF endangers public safety because rogue dealers supply the criminal market. Dr. Daniel Webster, who directs the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Policy and Research, found that even one gun dealer's practices can negatively affect the community. Webster found that when a single Wisconsin gun dealer stopped selling Saturday night special handguns, all crime guns in Milwaukee dropped by 44%. Before the policy changed, the store had sold more than half of Milwaukee's crime guns. Webster's findings proves how reforming bad apples keeps the entire bushel from rotting. Rotting. For that reason, Brady has multifaceted strategy to reduce crime, guns, litigation, inspection, enforcement, and policy. Um, don't forget key, key terms here are gun tracing is how authorities track a gun's path from manufacture to first retail sale. A crime gun is a gun recovered by law enforcement that may have been used in a crime or the possession of the gun itself may have been a crime. So through litigation, we find the following. Even when the ATF doesn't crack down on irresponsible dealers, lawsuits can. Brady Legal represents those who've been harmed by irresponsible gun dealers and lawsuits that hold these dealers accountable. These lawsuits place a 
price on dangerous, irresponsible gun industry conduct and force gun dealers who sell crime guns to change their ways or to shut down. Brady Legal and Brady Legal Alliance are law and firm partners have secured significant victories, including uh, representing Kirsten England, who was shot and killed en route to visit her sons at college in a suit against the two dealers who supplied guns to the murder. After that, after trial courts upheld the claims, the Arizona-based online dealer J&G and the Oregon dealer World Pawn settled by paying damages and changing their business practices. Representing uh, Sandra Mata in a suit against a gun dealer who irresponsibly transferred a gun to the man who shot and killed her husband. In a settlement, the Texas dealer agreed to implement policies that increased its employees' capacity to prevent dangerous sales and created specific measurable gun safety procedures. Um, Representing Officer Thomas Wharton IV, a Chicago police officer against a Mississippi pawn shop that supplied a gun used to kill him. In a settlement, the Mississippi dealer agreed to change its business practices to prevent gun trafficking. As Officer Wharton's father, Thomas Wharton III, commented, if all gun dealers did it, it would um, make the country safer for all. Uh, there's many other lawsuits here that uh, Brady has been active in. Uh, I think you should or, uh, support organizations like Brady and help them uh, get the guns off the road that are off the street that are illegal. And we also need to reduce the number of uh, weapons in total in the country. Uh, after this is all done, we still have the epidemic of school violence that has only been interrupted by uh, school closings. All right. Um, we pray that you uh, are safe at this time of COVID-19. We pray that if you protest, you social distance as best you can. Um, and finally, I, we pray that the uh, guns get off the street. You take, off, take care of yourselves and have a good week. Uh, this is Kevin Stoda at the Kevin Stoda Channel uh, reading you from the Brady's recent newsletter. And uh, you keep updated too and uh, keep your voices loud. Just give us a thumbs up at the Kevin Soda channel.